you're aware no sooner the government was installed and we were confronted with the urban local bodies elections in our state. This is not new to all of us. You're well aware of the past and what transpired in all the government's attempt to hold this ULB elections over the years. I wish to clear the air or by our people on this particular issue. I would like to take you back a few years earlier how this came about. In the year 2001, the Nagaland Municipal Act was enacted by the State Assembly for the first time. In the backdrop of we being a resource crunch state with almost zero revenue, our government had to look up for fundings to develop our state and our towns and cities. And the central government gives fund as aid to our municipalities and the town councils only if we enact a law to constitute the municipal councils. So perhaps in the desperation, the government of yesteryears had to enact this 2001 Municipal Act. While doing so, we don't allege them of any ill motive. I am certain that it was with good intentions to develop our state and benefit the citizens, that they quickly adopted this resolution and brought about this act. Little knowing the consequences of endorsing Article 243 and the series A to Z, and with it, the 74th Amendment of the Constitution of India. So, this traces back again to the 73rd Amendment, which was in place prior to 19, 1992. And uh, the transition of uh, the 73rd being superseded by the 74th Amendment, uh, there were a lot of other articles in the Constitution which came along with it. Perhaps without wanting to point fingers or finding faults of the government of those years, I have to a lot of correspondence also took place between the states and the center of our state at any level for discussion or this matter. So we missed the bus and we could never respond to it at the act, the 74th amendment was uh, adopted by our state assembly in 2001, just as it was. So along with this Central X, there are so many laws, regulations, which come along. So after 2001, our state government had tried to amend 
certain parts of that Nagaland Municipal Act from time to time, at least four or five times. But uh, it failed to fulfill the desire of our people. And so we have had a lot of hurdles over the years in our attempts to constitute the municipalities. So we have reached this stage after 22 years, we have reached a stage where we had to take a relook at the entire act, and uh, that is when the state assembly has resolved to completely repeal this 2001 act and go for a new act of our own, the laws and regulations of which will be framed by our own people to suit our condition and situation. Can we hold it there? Why the state legislature has opted to repeal this act in total? The 33 person women's reservation came to the fore and uh, some certain sections of the society dragged the goal to the core. So here there was a tussle in between our own people where the social practices of our Naga society, be it any tribe, does not accept the imposition of a fixed percentage being imposed on the representatives for women folks. Because it is not akin to our culture and our social practices. We had an extreme custom maybe, and a traditional practice where women were barred to partake in many areas of our social uh, life. But over the years, we have made a lot of concessions and uh, to keep pace with time, we have uh, removed all those restrictions and you have seen women taking part in the formal, former male-dominated areas in our society also, including leadership. I did not say, and you know it well, that in the early 70s also, much before any of the northeastern states had women representatives, we had our Ati, late Ati Rano Shaiza, who was elected to the Lok Sabha, the lone seat from Nagaland. She was a woman. There's, there was no reservation. And even today, without any reservation, there are two women representatives already in the state assembly. Out of the three of them, to return with the mandate of our electorates uh, without reservation. And in so many areas where it was a male domain, in sports too, we have seen women folks becoming wrestlers, where even to cross the procession of the wrestlers entering the ground, were restricted by a woman. And uh, you see the women folks in our police forces these days carrying automatic rifles and guarding our state, which were actually uh, not practiced in the past by our people. 
So, you see, we have restrictions. We have social practices where women does not hunt, whether it is for trophy, whether it is for game, whether it is for food. We don't, uh, we don't let them carry the spears, the doubts, and the guns. And this is also a social practice that no man for weaves a makala or a shawl. It is not forbidden, neither it is an offense. It is simply just not practice in any Naga village, anywhere in the Naga inhabited areas. But of late, we have removed all these hurdles and it is already an accepted norm that we have women representatives even at the lowest grassroots level local bodies like the village councils where we have women representatives, the village development boards where we have women VDB members also and so on and so forth. Everywhere it is all right. So we feel that uh, women have found a place in our society today and whatever is necessary pertaining to our social practices, we will accommodate, but the uh, people, the government must be allowed, must be permitted to frame our own rules, our own laws, in as far as our social practices are concerned. This is derived from the Constitution of India, wherein the Article 371A has clearly stated that no act of parliament in respect of our social and religious practices, our customary laws and our traditions will not be imposed by any central law unless the state assembly accepts it by a resolution adopted by our state legislature. So today, after having tried the 2001 Municipal Act, we have run into a lot of controversies. So thereby, the state government has taken a relook and uh, we have uh, completely repealed the old Act on the 28th of March and the government, the legislature will be constituting a panel, a committee whereby this committee will have a wide-ranging consultation with all concerned and will bring about a new act which is befitting to our way of life, our social practices, and the state legislature will adopt that new act for our Nagaland Municipal Act as early as possible. So that is where we are. <clears throat> but the government is aware of the urgency in uh, reenacting a new law to substitute the old one. So we will lose no time. We will lose no time. expect the constitution and also the formation of the committee and how is it going to be? Oh, to add to that, what is the stand of the government on the Supreme Court's order? Yes. yes. In fact, I was waiting for that from you. I have few copies here which uh, you can just go through once. This is the Supreme Court's latest order. Seventeenth of this month, the latest order of the Supreme Court of India, you can see there, the first page, 
17th of April. In the last para, you can see the order. In the second page is the full order here. Our media houses carried in your front pages that uh, a contempt of court has been notified and our chief minister, Mr. Rio, has been pulled up by the court. Our state government has been pulled up by the court for contempt. Now, I would like you to read through this carefully. It's only a one page order. Nowhere is it mentioned a contempt of court has been ordered. No way. So I don't really understand how certain quarters among us have resorted to that statement that the court has pulled up the chief minister, the court has pulled up the state government for contempt of court. It is unfounded. This is baseless. That is why I'm giving you a copy of this order. It is the Supreme Court's own original order. And it says here, in the first para, they deal with a reference to the previous court hearings, whereby they felt betrayed, maybe, on certain understanding between the legal team and the court. But the the crux of the issue is in the following paragraphs, where they have referred the matter to the additional Solicitor General of India, who was there representing the Union of India on behalf of the government of India. And uh, what he says, what he stated, his submission was that the government of India was only asked to send additional supporting paramilitary forces to the state to conduct the panchayat, which they mean the urban local bodies elections, to assist the state. And nothing more. But the main portion of the order deals with the opinion of the government of India. Now that the state assembly the legislature has repealed the act of 2001. What is the stand of the government of India on this? Whether it is acceptable, whether any action should be taken upon it, or everything is all right as it was. That is what they are asking the additional solicitor general of India to reply back to the court within two weeks effective on the 1st of May, the next year. So here, they have asked him to make special reference to the Article 371A. What does it deal with? What are the provisions therein? Which have, from where the State Assembly have derived its powers to repeal a central act? That is what they have asked. Because perhaps the matter is subjudice, and I will not go into detail, but only basing on the orders here. My interpretation and our layman's understanding to this order is that the court has not been appraised of the provisions of those articles and sub clauses which uh, refers to our customary laws our religious and social practices and other things. So they have asked for more documents, more information on these articles, and uh, they have asked our legal team in the last UBC to make these presentations on the first of May. That is to say, uh, what special constitutional guarantees have been given to us under this 371. And I don't blame the judges or the court because 
even politicians from the mainland don't understand our social practices too well. They are not conversant uh, with our way of life. So judges, lawyers, it is least expected of them to understand our culture, our custom, our practices, where their life is confined to the court most of the time. So rightly, they have asked the team, our legal team and the uh, additional solicitor general to make a presentation on our background of uh, the customary social and religious practices. That is all. And that, uh, that should be made within a span of two weeks. So I believe our Advocate General and his team, our legal team, are preparing all necessary documentations to make a presentation to the court on the 1st of May, which should clear the air and throw some light on the background. And we expect the court to give a just judgment to our case here. So there is a gross misconception on the part of all concerned that there was a contempt of court. Well, this is badly miscarried. This is where I would like to make a request to our media houses to kindly authenticate any matter from the source where it originated before it is uh, written or publicized for public consumption in future. So you see in the court line, it says, you know, uh, that what is sought to be done is in breach of the undertaking given to the court. Mm -hmm. It is already mentioned here, this is a breach of the court's order. Because the court has already sought that the election should be held by 16 of May. But now that we are asking to repeal it, we will not hold the elections, but we are going to repeal it. So it is saying that it is breach of the undertaking given to this court. So doesn't it mean content of the court? No. If so, they would have added a line bottom in the bottom that this is a breach, and so it is amounts to content of court. But it is absent. I would not say that. They have just made a statement on the observation of the proceedings, maybe. So what was the order? This is the fifth. On the fifth, Preceding the 17th, I have the order here. And here too, they have asked, it is very light, I must say, for a Supreme Court order. It's very light. They have asked us to conduct, to conduct the municipal elections. But that is to the State Election Commission and the government. So when the state legislature, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, the government was fully prepared. They have issued all the notice also for conduct of the election. They were fully prepared. But when the situation did not favor, they have been trying to postpone it further, seeking more time. The court intervened again, asking the government to conduct it at all costs, if required, as they said, they had already given orders to the government of India to send additional paramilitary forces. Now here, the people's representative, the legislators and the legislature took everything into account. And after studying it, they have uh, concluded that it is not possible. We will be facing another situation like in 2017, where there will be chaos, loss of life, damage to properties, and in the end, nothing is going to happen. Because this is not like other issues. Urban local bodies or anything which means election requires the mass participation of the people, the electorates. Now, when the people are already objecting, agitating, and refuse to take part, even if the government notifies, nobody is going to come forward. 
and without the participation of the citizens, the electorates, it is not going to be successful again. So the matter was brought to the assembly, the state legislature, and the legislative assembly have uh, repealed it. So now the situation is in the absence of an act, the very act upon which the government is going to conduct the election goes missing. It is no more there. Then upon what act will the State Election Commission or the government go ahead with the elections? So it is up. It is there where we are now. And uh, coming back to the court's order here, I cannot say that it is a contempt of court when they have not put that word in writing. So it is not a contempt of court. Is it not possible to hold the elections as per When the very act which deals with the urban local bodies is not there anymore in the state, that there is no ground for the state government to conduct such an election. That is what I mean. I am happy that you asked that. So regarding the committee which the government will be forming, uh, Will there be any members from the uh, civil society organization or the panchayat uh, association? It has not been still formed, constituted. So the government will decide and uh, make its suggestions to the legislature. This has become a business of the assembly and not the government now because it was the assembly, the legislature, which has repealed it. So the speaker and the assembly will decide the composition of that panel. I'm sure they will consider all these options. We have never had an official translation and interpretation of the 371A. So it's as if you read our minds and it is high time appropriate time for an official version of the 371A. So matters are being discussed at the highest level, at the appropriate forum, that this should immediately be interpreted and that will be the official version of the state. You're right. I will stop short of anything before the hearings now, I think. Uh, I'm sure the Honorable Court will be considerate and will surely trace back the origins of the 371A, how it came into the Constitution of India, why were these points considered when in 1962, December, this was brought to the Parliament, and out of the 16 points that the NPC has submitted to the government, why particularly this 371A, which comprises a vote, only four points were selected and enacted these special provisions. They were. How is it going to happen? Yes. This will be discussed in the People's House that uh, we have borrowed a copy-paste, rather, of some states blindly, in great haste, adopt this resolution of 2001. Nagaland TV, Sob Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For Dumapu viewers, we are on channel number 994 in Global Chapter and Kohima and Mokokchong viewers, switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital. For all news and updates, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter.